If you could open up with me uh, to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. This is our chapter in the Bible that gives us instruction for communion. And I'm going to read... I'm going to read the text, and then we're going to go to John chapter 6. And I'm going to preach uh, just a little bit before we actually do communion. Is that okay? So uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. We're going to read actually from verse 17. Now, in giving these instructions, I do not praise you, since you come together not for the better but for the worse. For first of all, when you come together as a church, I hear that there are divisions among you. And in part, I believe it. For, the, for there must also be factions among you that those who are approved may be recognized among you. Therefore, when you come together in one place, it is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, each one takes his own supper ahead of others. And one is hungry and another is drunk. What? Do you not have houses to eat and drink in or do you despise the church of God and shame those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I do not praise you. For I receive from the Lord that which I also deliver to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took the bread And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Can we keep reading? Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drink this, drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner. So it's possible to do this in a worthy manner. It's also possible to do this in an unworthy manner. He will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But, gives us a way out. Let a man examine himself. So let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, this is one of those instances where judging yourself is a good thing. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord that we may not be condemned with the world. Therefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. But if anyone is hungry, let him eat at home, lest you come together for judgment. And the rest I will set in order when I come. If you could turn now to John John 6, and we're going to read a little bit more. We're going to be talking about, I'm in a hurry this morning. I'm in a hurry. On the following day when the people who were standing on the other side of the sea saw that there was no other boat, this is verse 22, except the one which the disciples had entered, and that Jesus had not entered the boat with his disciples, but his disciples had gone away alone. However, other boats came from Tiberias near the place where they ate bread after the Lord had given thanks. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they also got into boats and came to Capernaum, seeking Jesus. When they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them and said, most assuredly I say to you, you seek me not because you saw the signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. 
Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you. Because God the Father has set his seal on him. When they said to him, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, this is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he sent. Therefore they said to him, what sign will you perform then that we may see it and believe you? What work will you do? Our fathers ate manna in the desert as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Are you still here? Come on, pay attention, please. Jesus said to them, most assuredly I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. He's talking about himself. Then he said to them, then they said to him, Lord, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me, and yet you do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me. And the one who comes to me I will, be, I will by no means cast out. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of the Father who sent me, that, all, that of all he has given me I should lose nothing, but should raise it up at the last day. And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Come on, this is good news. Then, Jesus, then, the, Jews, then the Jews then complained about him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he says, I have come down from heaven? Jesus therefore answered and said to them, do not murmur among yourselves. Come on, he hears every whisper, every thought, every intention of the heart. Do not m murmur among yourselves. No one, can, no one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws him. And I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be all be taught by God. Therefore, everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except he who is from God. He has seen the Father. And I say to you, he who believes in me has everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which comes down from heaven, that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore quarreled again. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed. And my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. As the living father sent me and I live because of the father. So he who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers ate the manna and are dead. He who eats this bread will live forever. You know, first of all, I think sometimes we can just read a lot and it preaches a lot better than we do. I'm going to keep reading. No, I'm kidding. Someone said enough. I'm in a hurry. I... Um, 
I was thinking about this. Paul's addressing the church in Corinth. He's saying you're, you're coming together, not even waiting for one another. Getting a quick bite, drinking a little bit too much, and you're, you're doing what you're supposed to do, but you're doing it the wrong way. Hello. We can do the right thing. We can even do what God's word says, but we can still miss it by doing it the wrong way. They're doing what they were instructed to do as a church, but they're doing it the wrong way. You know, in John 6, before Jesus is talking about eating his body and drinking his blood by, you know, and may, maybe I should put this in and include this right now. This is a hard message to understand. Are you here? No, it's, no, it's not. <laughs> so spiritual. No, it's simple. It's a hard message that Jesus is preaching. And then they ask a very uh, understandable question. I isn't this Joseph's son? And how is it that he came from heaven? And uh, more importantly, how can I eat of his body? Cannibalism <laughs> is a new form of Christianity. Eat my body and drink my blood. Now, you know, if we, if we preach these messages on the streets, there, there'd, be a, there'd be a lot of questions. There'd be, probably be a lot of Anger and people, you know, doing all kinds of stuff. Probably throwing bread at you. You know, eat, eat this. No, I'm not going to eat you, you're home, you know, weirdo. Um, but when, when we take this message uh, at surface level and we try to understand it with our mind, uh, eating the blood, drinking the blood of Jesus and eating the body of Jesus is very strange. Are you here or is it just me? Yes. Jesus, I, I understand worshiping you. I understand following you. I understand, I understand coming to the house of God, but, but sitting down and you're laying on the table, <laughs> whoa. Yeah. I like you beside me at the table, but on the table, Jesus is saying, you have to eat my body and you have to drink my blood. You know, a chapter before John 6, Jesus feeds 5,000 people. Well, 5,000 men, maybe many more people. 5,000 men he feeds. You know, it's interesting when he feeds them and he does the miracle of bread and fish, no one asks, is this the son of Joseph? In fact, no one questions where this man is even from. But they celebrate the victory, they celebrate the miracle because they got food for their stomach. Are you here? They were, they were fed physically. And when they were fed physically, they did not question where he came from or who he is or his, who his parents are. In fact, they were rejoicing at how great this man is because they got their fill. And then the Bible says, when they got their fill, you see, physical food will only last you a certain amount of time. Are you here? Getting the fill on the physical level, getting what you need on the level of your soul, getting what you need on the level of your mind, getting what you need on the level of your stomach will only give you what you need for a certain amount of time. And so, of course, the meal was good. Can somebody shout amen? The meal was good. Jesus broke the bread. The fish probably tasted even better than, the boy, than how the little boy brought it. The bread maybe was even warm. I don't know, but the bread was good. Everybody got their fill, and there was even leftovers. Somebody said amen. But then they were hungry again. And the hunger... Calls them to begin to seek 
Jesus. Only he sees the fuel of my hunger. Only he sees what is behind the hunger that's causing me to seek him. Listen, I'm preaching this message first and foremost to myself. Because I can come here, I can partake of communion, I can lift my hands in worship, I can shout the preacher down, amen. But why am I seeking him? Why am I following Jesus? Why am I here this morning on Sunday? Please, man, if you hear one thing today, you are maybe used to being here, used to the worship, used to someone shouting you down, used to someone encouraging you, but just please hear me and ask yourself, why do I follow Jesus? Why am I here? Why do I seek him? They begin to seek him. And my friends, by what we see with our eyes, they were doing something that we all claim we do, going after Jesus. They even got in their boats and they began to go a long journey to Capernaum to find him. And when they found him, they found him. Listen, when we seek him, we, they were seeking him and they found him. But when they found him, he asked, why do you follow me? Why is it that you've been seeking me? Did yesterday's bread run out? Yesterday's bread ran out? And you want more bread? Listen, the bread I gave you yesterday was bread for yesterday. But if you follow me, just to get your fill and be in a hurry to go do whatever you want. That's not why I called you to follow me. Why do you follow Jesus? Is there a mess in your life that you need fixed? Is there sickness in your body that you need him to heal? Is, is there a past behind you that you are tired of it following you, and so you follow him. You want to be used by him, and so you follow him. You want to do miracles, and so you follow him. They followed him to the other side, but they weren't actually following him. They wanted what he could do for them. And what, we, and what he could do for them, they weren't concerned about their spiritual condition. They were concerned about getting their fill again. I question what we are filled with and if we are really being filled with him. When we claim to encounter this Jesus, but are in a hurry right back to everything else. Listen, everybody, everybody, every business, commerce, ideas, apps, everything we have being made right now, created right now, the car, everything is made to help our pace of life. But I want to challenge you just in this little area is the pace of life that you are living in causing you not to follow Jesus the way that he wants you to follow him is the pace of the world life that we are challenged with every day changing the pursuit that I have for him and why I'm following him Am I coming to him just for one hour to get a quick bite, but then everything else that my day holds, I'm off and running to what I need to do, accomplish, and get done. 
I'm in a hurry. See, they were in a hurry not to hear what he had to say, not to follow him, which would cost them their life. They were there just to get what they need, that they could go back to what they were doing. I don't want to follow him just to help me receive what I need to live my own life. I don't want to receive his word or, or, or encounter his presence just so I can go do whatever it is I want to do. Listen, they hit an intersection where they had to decide, will you continue following me because I do signs and miracles or will you follow me because you desire me? At the end of this story, Many, the Bible says, many turn away. I know nobody here, nobody here, if we're honest, if we're sincere, we want to we, we miss the target right at the end. No, we want, we want to fulfill what God placed in our life to do. We don't, we don't want to get into heaven barely getting in or, or, or at the door hoping we're going to get in. I want to be able to stare death in the face and say, I'm not afraid, for I know he who is my Lord. I know whom I serve. I know who I have followed. I have no doubt in my mind where it is I'm going. But you can't do that just by following him for the reasons of signs. The church got together, they ate the bread, they drank the wine, they did not even wait for one another. Listen, when Jesus grabbed the bread, he said, this is my body, broken for you. And in the breaking of his body, when we begin to partake of his body, not just bread, we begin to partake of his body, something supernatural continues to take place among us, is we, our one body. Communion is not just for me to do with my little family at home. Communion is for the church because the church is his body. It's when we gather together that we partake in communion as we remember his body being broken and his blood being shed and we drink of his blood and we eat of his body. He will always call us deeper. Listen, he will always call us deeper. In fact, if you're not going deeper, somewhere you stopped following him. Somebody needs to hear that. If he's not calling you deeper, somewhere you stopped following him. Does it get harder and harder and harder every day? No, it's seasonal. But he leads us. He leads us to a place where we have to deny ourselves and truly realize, analyze, see why it is that I follow him, what, why it is that I seek him, why it is that I call him Lord. The church has done a good job. Maybe, maybe we say a good job, but the church has done a bad job. We filter people through the, through the sanctuary as fast as possible, get ready for the next services. But we're not here just to get filled on a physical level. We're not here just to be touched emotionally. There, are spiritual, there is spiritual food that he offers to us that he wants us to partake of. There is bread that is from heaven. Not just good preaching, not just cute messages, not just things that make you cry or make you laugh. There is bread from heaven that we begin to consume, which is him. There's blood that we begin to drink. This is not a shedding blood here at the altar. Come drink blood. No, this is a continual stepping into the covenant that you made with him. A continual renewal of the covenant that he made with you. I'm reminded today as we partake in communion, God, I'm in communion with you, which means I'm in covenant with you. 
I'm not just following you to see signs, miracles, and wonders. I'm following you because of you. If I know you, it's enough. If I see you, it's enough. If I hear you, it's enough. If I can follow you, it's enough. I don't need the benefits of following you. I need you. And we cannot deceive people presenting them benefits that they would follow Jesus. Following Jesus will cost you your life. Pick up your cross and follow me, Jesus said. Follow me. But listen, that road is the best road for you. It's the best road for me. If you haven't made a decision to follow Jesus for real, you need to make that decision. You can't just blend in with the crowd, make everybody happy, show your family that you're here, put on the right clothes. He wants you. He wants your heart. And he's asking this morning, why is it that you follow me? Why is it that you worship me? Why is it that you lift your hands and lift your voice? Why is it that you serve? Why is it that you're here? They did not answer these questions. And the danger behind not answering these questions is that at, at not answering these questions and realizing why is it that I'm following him, you eventually begin to turn away. These questions were not answered. And Jesus is left with a few that are following him at the words of Peter. You have the words of life. And so I follow you. You see, the bread is not just my encounter with him or my experience during worship. This is the manna. This is the flesh. This is what we consume. I need this word. Because it is his, it's his body. I need this word because it is my bread. I need this word because it's the bread of life. Teach a generation to live a godly life without the word, and you'll have a deceived generation. Teach a generation to observe the word of God, to follow the word of God, to live according to the word of God. You'll have a faithful generation. You'll have a generation that begins to encounter the Lord for who he is, not this world presenting who he is. We need him. And I love that in his, in his word, it will, never, it will never set us up for failure. It will never deceive us. His word is true. And when I get in his word, it begins to feed me. It begins to feed my life. And listen, this bread leaves me full. It's so simple, we don't want to do it. Today when we partake, examine yourself. In fact, Paul is instructing them to examine themselves, to judge themselves before they partake. If we could stand together this morning. If all of our brothers can come out. Father, we thank you for your presence here. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are here. We thank you so much, Lord. God, we take some time right now before we pray for the bread and for the wine. We pray right now for each other. We pray for ourselves. 
We want to examine ourselves in this moment. Judge ourselves in this moment. Maybe somebody here years ago gave their life to the Lord, was water baptized, began to walk in covenant with God, but is not walking with God anymore. Maybe living comfortably, maybe living selfishly, maybe trying to figure it all out on your own. My friend, you're here this morning, and I believe I'm sharing specifically to you. You're not going to figure this out on your own. The only way you can continue your journey is the way that you started it, by giving your life to Him in full surrender. Being sincere, God is never going to be angry with us when we are sincere to Him. God, I, I'm sorry that I was following you because I just wanted to be used by you or I wanted people to see how good of a Christian I am or I wanted to be on stage to worship or I wanted, uh, I didn't want to have a bad life. I want to be blessed. I want to make a lot of money. I want to get married and, and all these different reasons. Pray a sincere prayer in this moment right now before the bread is going to be passed along and the wine is going to be passed along. Just pray right now. You and God. Allow the Holy Spirit to examine. Allow the Holy Spirit to judge. so much for your body that was broken for us and your blood that was shed for us we're so thankful God for the price that you paid for each one of us on the cross today we remember we remember again what you did for each one of us we remember what you did for us on that cross we thank you so much God we thank you so much God For I received from the Lord that which I also deliver to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in my remembrance. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. As you partake this morning, have your heart open before God, honest before God. Eat of the body and drink of the blood. In Jesus' mighty name. We 
Thank you, Lord.